Throughout life, we all need to be brave from time to time. Whether it's your first day at school, standing up for what you believe in, or getting up to pee in the middle of the night. But as you'll see in this video, there's a fine line between being brave and just being insanely idiotic. From a girl who clobbered a bear, to thrill seekers who intentionally risk their own lives in the name of adrenaline, join me as we witness some truly brave yet idiotic things people have done. Granny versus Snake Ma, Grandma, fresh cookies, bedtime stories, there's nothing quite like it. But not all grandmas are like that. In 2018, when a Florida family discovered a snake loose in their yard, they called the biggest badass they knew, Grandma. And entering the ring, it's Grandma versus Snake. All right, and Grandma is going straight in with a weapon. It appears to be a garden rake. The snake dodges Granny, skillfully evading. Full of fury, Grandma goes back in with a rake and gets the snake in a death grip. Grandma is the victor. She runs and takes the snake on a trip downtown with a power bomb. Oh, no. Wait. It looks like it isn't over yet. That's faster than I've ever seen. <gasps> God. The snake slams Granny to the ground. One, two, three, and she's out. It's a knockout for the snake. Now, uh, winners and losers aside, what really matters is participation. I mean, I know I wouldn't have been able to do what Grandma did, whether it was brave or just dumb. Let me know in the comments, would your grandma win in a wrestling match against this snake? Cliff Racer In 2021, a Brazilian man was having an ordinary day at work, loading up a truck, transporting gas canisters. All of a sudden, disaster struck. The driver had left the vehicle running in neutral, only a strange malfunction struck the vehicle causing it to inexplicably engage in first gear. Uh, take a look at what happened next. Yep, while most people simply would have allowed the truck to plummet off the edge of the cliff with its explosive cargo, this brave soul made a snap decision. This dude literally put his own life on the line as he hopped into the vehicle and managed to slam the brakes down just in the nick of time. Heroic as it was, it wasn't necessarily the best choice for his own self-preservation. I mean, the guy was literally seconds away from crashing into an abyss, in a truck loaded with gas canisters. Not only that, but if we rewind the clip, you can see how easily he could have been crushed into the wall or injured by the door. So sure, there's no denying this guy has bravery, but as for brains, well, I'm not so certain. Act natural. Picture this, you're trying to get into a country, illegally, but you need to go unnoticed by those pesky border officers. Any ideas? Well, here's a cheat sheet of what not to do, courtesy of a few Mexican guys who catastrophically failed. The year is 2001, and while the most famous Enrique on the scene is pop star Enrique Iglesias with his 2001 hit song Hero, Enrique Aguilar Canchola is also making headlines. Only his headlines were about the fact that he attempted to cross the Mexican border disguised as a car seat. Yep, according to U.S. immigration and naturalization officials, the then 42-year-old had craftily crammed himself into a car seat in an attempt to sneak into the United States undetected. As he was discovered in his presumably lumpy leather throne, his facial expression read, Act natural. But the jig was up for Enrique. Granted, he wasn't the first hopeful migrant to dangerously wheedle themselves into intricate 
and potentially deadly vehicle compartments to enter the U.S. And true, the overall sentiment is pretty bold. After all, it's sad to see the desperate lengths people will go to for a better life. Even so, it's hard to visualize a more idiotic image than a sweaty grown man upholstered in leather pretending to be a car seat. Alright, so disguising as a chair didn't work, time for plan B. For this, we construct a ramp at either side of the US border fence. Then we simply drive up the ramp over the top of the fence, and it's plain sailing from there on. Foolproof, right? Well, maybe not, but in 2012, a suspected group of Mexican smugglers had the cunning idea to do just this. Predictably, they were soon stopped in their tracks as their car got stuck on the peak of the fence. Unable to maneuver the car, it remained teetering atop of the border. And believe it or not, this huge Jeep Cherokee didn't go unnoticed by the border officers. However, by the time they'd approached the vehicle, the culprits had said hasta la vista and scampered back towards Mexico, taking their precious cargo with them, and going unidentified by the law. In the grand scheme of things, while this was certainly a bold strategy, you have to be a special kind of idiot in order to think you can simply drive over the border. So looks like our grand migration hasn't gone to plan. I guess we'll have to sit back inside our leather car seats perched atop the border fence and settle into some more tales of brave foolery, won't we? Bear Beater <laughs> I'm just a jolly old bear minding my own business. So don't mind me, just passing through with my two cubs. And what a beautiful day it is for it. Uh, uh, uh oh, here comes some trouble. The exhibit of foolhardy bravery you just saw comes from 17-year-old Haley Morinico from California, and she wouldn't let anything, not even a wild bear, come between her and her pups. Though she does admit herself that her decision to get into a fight with a wild bear was pretty idiotic. She later testified that everything just happened so fast that she didn't fully realize it was a bear. And had she realized, she probably wouldn't have been so raring to square up. But what exactly should you do in this situation? Well, first of all, bear attacks on dogs are rare, particularly from the black bear species, like the brown-tinted one in this clip. They'd usually rather flee than fight, unless it's a mama bear and her cubs. But if an attack does happen, experts highly discourage you from rushing in to break it up like Haley did, as this might only infuriate the bear more and put your own life at risk. Instead, distracting the bear by waving, making noises, or even spraying it with a hose might defuse the altercation, which are all good ideas, though admittedly they don't have the same ring to them as the 17-year-old girl who kicked a bear's ass bare-handed. See you later, alligator. We humans can be real jerks sometimes. You know, like when a friendly neighborhood alligator stops by to say hello, and what do we do? We treat it like it's some kind of monster. That's exactly what happened in 2021 when a Mount Dora neighborhood in Florida caught wind of a reptilian intruder. And let's just say it was treated like garbage. Check it out. So who is this hero come to take out the alligator trash? Local Abdul Jean Malik. With bucket loads of bravery and his trusty trash can, Abdul wrangled the beast and wheeled it back from whence it came, a nearby lake. Locals sang praise and glory, and while I hate to be that guy, I can't help but think Abdul's tussle with the reptile was pretty unnecessary. 
Why? Well, wouldn't it have been easier and safer to have just called in animal control? After all, while alligators don't generally go out of their way to attack humans, they might if provoked. And with a bite force of over 2,000 pounds per square inch, they're able to effortlessly crush your bones. Plus the fact that Florida state law prohibits killing, harassing, or possessing of alligators without a permit. So, Abdul, I'm afraid I'm going to have to arrest you on the grounds of illegal alligator harassment. That scaly fellow is just trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty, and you <laughs> threw him in the garbage. For shame. Hand standing ovation. Okay, everyone, let's salute the flag. Wait, 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 that's not right. How many times do I have to tell you, Eskil? We want to raise the flag, not be the flag. Jokes aside, this is 42-year-old Norwegian daredevil Eskil Roningsbakken. And what you just saw was him in 2016 suspending himself above Vetifossen, one of Norway's tallest waterfalls at 902 feet. And while you'd probably assume he had a safety harness or something, he explained that he had nothing but years of physical and mental preparation. He's performed this stunt 30 times with no problems, and there's always the chance that a simple slip or slide could result in him facing his demise. But brave yet idiotic is Eskel's middle name, and if you need more proof then just check him out back in 2013 when he flew off in a hot air balloon, climbed out of it, and casually performed a handstand on a trapeze, all while being 1,550 feet in the air. No safety. Just him, his strength, and the looming possibility of plummeting into the abyss. Driving crazy. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a message to all passengers. There will unfortunately be no refreshments available on today's flight as the cart has been bulldozed over by a forklift. Uh, let me fill you in. Rewind back to September 2019. We find the staff at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport in a bit of a pickle. It appeared a ghost had possessed a catering cart and was enjoying a joy ride around the runway. However, the truth was a case of water had fallen inside the vehicle and landed on the accelerator pedal, causing the cart to perform donuts by itself. And with it destroying anything that came into its path, the staff needed to think quick and stop the cart before it crashed into a nearby plane. It was then that a brave staff member had a bright idea. He noticed a nearby forklift, hopped in it, and, well, bulldoze that mother trucker into next week, truly saving the day. While there are a million ways that this could have gone terribly wrong for this guy, thankfully on this occasion, they went just right enough that we can safely call him a hero. Who, uh, who let the dogs out? There are two kinds of people in this world. People that love dogs, and people that don't have a heart. But dog politics aside, I think most of us will find it hard to simply drive past a dog that had been involved in a hit and run, ignoring the injured creature. Which is why when Andrea Athi was driving through Mexico in 2019, she knew she had to help an injured dog she spotted at the side of the road. Only once she'd arrived at the vet with it, a shocking revelation awaited her. It appeared her knowledge of animals was, um, <clears throat> questionable. This dog that Andrea had just been snuggling in her car was actually a coyote, which might explain why it had just been hit by a car and left abandoned. While coyotes can be pretty aggressive, they rarely attack humans, though attacks do occasionally happen, and keeping one in your car seems like a pretty good way to up those chances. But according to Andrea, this coyote, which she'd bestowed with the name of Poncho, was a good coyote which realistically likely means it was in shock and too out of it to initiate combat mode. But while I'd love to tell you they all lived happily ever after, Pancho's injuries meant he was unable to move his hind legs or empty his bowels. And after five days without responding to treatment, Pancho bid this cruel world adieu. 
He's stealing farmers' chickens in heaven now. Bravery Land Looking for your next romantic getaway? Well, say au revoir to the city of love and ni hao to southeast China. Yep, jet off to Wan Shang Ordovician Theme Park near Chongqing, where you and your partner can snuggle in bed whilst taking in panoramic views of the Wan Shang Black Mountain Valley. Oh, while being suspended in a bed 300 meters above a deathly chasm. Talk about a room with a view. Yep, this theme park really is a daredevil's Disneyland, with spine-chilling attractions that peer into the chasmic depths hundreds of feet below. From a 400-foot-high glass bridge to a swing that pendulates over the edge of a 1,000-foot cliff, if you ever wanted to experience the sensation of soiling yourself, then now's your chance. And you might be thinking, sure, this takes bravery, but it's hardly idiotic, right? After all, it's a theme park. It's not like you could actually fall, right? <laughs> right? Well, let's just say that Wan Sheng Ordovician Theme Park doesn't have the cleanest record. In 2018, the resort was forced to close one of their attractions after a major safety concern. Their now infamous stepping bridge that stands 500 feet above the ground allowed thrill-seekers to skip over the chasm with reassurance of a safety harness. Except when one guy was making leaps across the suspension, his safety harness detached. Luckily, the guy didn't fall, but in the unfortunate event that he did, it's safe to assume his harness would not have saved him. In a bid to clear their name, the park's marketing team claimed that it was an intentional publicity stunt to grab people's attention. But if you ask me, I'm not buying it. So if a combo of brave and idiotic sounds like your idea of fun, then head down to Wanshang Ordovician Theme Park today. Escalator Skater We've all been there. It's rush hour at the subway station. You're in a pinch for time and you just need to get ahead of the herd of commuters slowly shuffling down the escalators. Frustrating, huh? Well, the guy in this next clip had a wonderfully dumb solution. <laughs> the video clip bears the wonderful title, Descending Escalators Excellently. And yeah, it looks pretty excellent. But in all seriousness, do not try this at home. Or at least do it in public so people can see you fall. I kid, I kid. But while this life hack is pretty much a fast track to the emergency room, also consider that some escalators have these nice little speed bumps in between. Meaning that for all my fellas out there, you might also puncture a tire or two if you catch my drift. Down in the gutters. These days, people are addicted to their phones. It's ridic- Oh, hold on a second. <clears throat> uh, sorry, where was I? Oh yeah, folks today just can't get enough of texting, TikToking, and flexing their overpriced coffees. And with their heads in the iClouds, they can get into some pretty bizarre situations. Take British 16-year-old Ella Burchino, for example. The year was 2014, and the teen was sporting the latest iPhone, the iPhone 5S. As she meandered around the streets of Dover and Kent, she accidentally dropped her prized possession into a drain. Like a mother to a baby's cry, Ella knew exactly what she had to do. Get down that drain and bring her baby home. It was a simple mission, really. Remove the drain's lid, shimmy down, clasp the phone with her feet. What could go wrong? Well, this is what went wrong. It seems Ella had misjudged the size of the drain and quickly became lodged in place. And even with all her squirming attempts, it was just no use. She was stuck. Passersby offered a helping hand and alerted Ella's mom, who, like all good mothers would, took photos and laughed at her daughter's expense. In the end, the fire brigade was called out 
and managed to evacuate Ella from the gutters. Although her dearly beloved phone wasn't so lucky. A true British tragedy. Rickety Rider. There's nothing enormously brave about crossing a bridge. That is, except for one bridge, located in Siberia over the Vitim River, and it's certainly one to steer clear of. Originally built in 1982 as an access point for trains, the Vitim Bridge was soon abandoned, as most things from the 80s probably should be. Its poor infrastructure was a liability, and a sturdier bridge was constructed just a quarter mile upriver. Now all that remains of the original bridge is a precarious, dilapidated trail used mainly by thrill-seeking hopefuls who dare challenge the treacherous 1,870-foot-long bridge. Due to its wooden structure, the bridge is gradually rotting into obscurity. Pair that with the fact that it's barely six feet wide, is regularly iced over, and has no safety barriers to prevent you from plummeting into icy cold waters, and this bridge is pretty much a death trap. Surprisingly, there have been no recorded fatalities. Yet. But if you ask me, it's only a matter of time, given the existence of things like the footage you're seeing now. Here we see a guy called Martin Remus, who, with his Ford Bronco, bravely journeyed across the perilous stretch back in 2016. As you can see, his car is almost the same width as the bridge, and as the car lurches along, it isn't exactly the smoothest ride. But I suppose we can say, now that Martin's kindly and stupidly filmed that footage for us, no one else ever needs to do it again. Ride in the wave. As a kid, I would watch SpongeBob and be in awe of how cool Larry the Lobster looked while surfing. Man, he was my idol. But life got in the way, and now I am neither a lobster nor a surfer. It's totally fine, though, because now I know just how dangerous surfing can be. And if you don't believe me, then uh, you just keep watching. Now, usually when there are official weather warnings issued telling you not to go in the sea, it's probably best to listen. However, in 2021, windsurfer Adam Warchall fearlessly ignored professional advice and headed out to sea to catch a few gnarly waves. I hate to say I told you so, but it wasn't long until he was completely consumed by a ferocious 62-foot wave. So ferocious that its name on the streets is Jaws. Waves like this can be extremely dangerous, as they can submerge the surfer as far as 50 feet below the surface, causing total disorientation. And with waves coming in fast, the surfer must regain direction and reach the surface, fighting for a breath before being battered in another wave. Thankfully, using a maneuver which closes the glottis, aka the valve between the lungs and the mouth, Adam was able to stop himself from ingesting water after his fall, meaning he could remain focused and escape the waves. He lived to tell the tale this time. Though, let this be a lesson. Windsurfing on days when you're specifically warned not to probably isn't a good idea. Life in the Fast Lane as we've seen in this video, there's often a motivation to be brave, be it to save a truck, your dogs, and so on. Yet some people are brave purely because of stupidity. And if you need any evidence, then just check out this clip of a guy who thought it would be a good idea to casually ride his electric scooter down Interstate 35 in Dallas, Texas. Driver, like, tight movie, yeah. inspired. Oh, okay. And it's like, people like it because oh. they dress cool, he puts her in like a tight bomber Yo, jacket. Yo, what? Yes. Bro, but, like, yeah, are you like, on a bird cool. scooter on the highway? Like, Bro, God. what are you doing? Bro, what are you doing? Bro, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is the most wild thing I've ever seen. As you just saw, the guy diced his way through six lanes of traffic on a 70 mile per hour highway, showing that he quite literally lives life in the fast lane. 
That said, considering that most electric scooters only go 25 miles per hour, this guy wasn't so much going fast as he was making other motorists furious. It goes without saying how lucky both he and his scooter were to make it out alive and in one piece. But if you thought that was a dumb case of willful self-imposed danger, get a load of this next story. Cummings Cutlery Connoisseur This tale of bravery and woe begins in 1799, when 23-year-old American sailor John Cummings and his crewmates were on a voyage to France. Upon arrival, a day exploring the local points of interest led him to witness a performer who created the illusion that he was swallowing knives. Entranced by the theatrics, John returned to the ship and shared the tale with the rest of his crewmates. Only now, having had a few drinks, the drunken sailor claimed that he also possessed the same ability to swallow knives. And with that, John bravely put his money where his mouth was and swallowed a pocket knife. Now, you would assume he sustained injuries from tossing a knife down his gullet, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. He even indulged in three more knives that same evening. And the morning after, they allegedly came out the rear end just as smoothly as they'd gone in. It was to be another six years in 1805 before John would nibble on a knife again. And with a group of punters eager to see his party trick, John once again stuffed his face with 14 knives. Only this time, he paid the price. He was admitted to hospital for severe pain and vomiting, but unbelievably, just a few months after his recovery, he allegedly wolfed down another 17. Having tallied up 35 knives now, John had seemingly developed a strange addiction to the eating of inedible and dangerous things, a disorder known as pica. While he seemed to be able to, at this point, put an end to his sharp eating habits, John's days were numbered. For the next three years, he would suffer regular, severe vomiting and enjoy the company of Miss Diarrhea as the knives gradually damaged and occasionally departed his digestive system. And by 1809, it was lights out for the 33-year-old, as the sharp fragments had apparently perforated his internal organs, which led to the deterioration of his health. And that's why you only eat spoons, dum-dum. On that note, we've reached the end of the video. Have you ever done anything brave yet idiotic? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.